shiny Pokemon are those glittering, elusive, discolored creatures. Let's be real, we love them. And over the past few weeks, I've been thinking as I make these videos, what is the most versatile accent color to add to any shiny Pokemon to make it really pop? Some would say black, clearly by the popularity of my boy CGA's video, but what I truly think is the correct answer, totally not biased at all, is purple. That's right, you read the title correct today, we are hunting purple creatures, and let me tell you, these purple monsters are really, really cool. And something I really want to know is what is your favorite purple shiny Pokemon? Mine we do collect, but you'll have to wait and see till the end of the video what that is. So, watch as I attempt to beat Pokemon X using only purple shiny Pokemon. Let's get into it! I name myself Kakarot and wake up in our room. Now, we've been here before on this channel, in this very room, getting pecked by this bird, and you may be wondering, why do you keep coming back to these games? Well, it's because the X and Y games are probably my favorite Pokemon games. The cool new Pokemon, the region has a really cool layout, cool mega Pokemon, and of course the first game to improve the base shiny rate, making it far less stressful for me to hunt here. Speaking of hunting, I think it's time we hunt for our shiny starter. Oh, Johnny Finnegan! Yes! Oh, yes! Finally! Oh my god! Yes! Oh my god, I love that shiny! Let's go! So we claim our Firefox, no, not that one, and name it Lequeer. Now, of course, this is a hardcore Nuzlocke, so we will be following these rules. No items in battles, no overleveling, set mode is on, and we can only catch the first shiny purple Pokemon we find on each route. We make our way through the Santaloon Forest towards the first gym. Being a bug gym, we do have the advantage of having a fire type on the team. I reach level 12, the current level cap, and head into the battle. Her first Pokemon is somewhat problematic. Since it is a water type as well, our fire moves are only going to be doing neutral damage. The other problem was that my little Fennekin here has a horrible nature, lowering its special attack. This little Surskit here also uses water sport, which weakens fire moves, which isn't great. So first turn, I go for a Howl and hit it with two scratches instead. Vivillion, Vivillon, how do you say that? Is in next with its infestation, which is always scary to deal with. We hit it with an ember as the water sport fades. We take a couple more hits as we lower it down with more embers, and it drops me into blaze range, which is what ultimately lets me barely take out Vivillon. Earning us gym badge number one and bringing the level cap up to 25. I am going to go and catch a couple of Pokemon because my next hunt, I require a full team of six. Well, what? How do you require a full team of six? Well, I guess I don't require it, but it'll make it a lot easier if I have a full team of six. We catch our full team and head into the city to meet up with Sycamore. Now, after talking to him, not only does Laquia evolve into a full purple shiny, but we get to pick one of these Kanto starters. In previous videos, I thought grinding this fight every time you wanted to hunt for these starters was extremely obnoxious. But turns out, if you have a full team and reject adding it to your team, you can actually soft reset here the same way you would if you were claiming a gift Pokemon. So after days of grinding soft resets for the second time in this run, this happens. Sh oh, Shiny! Yes! Shiny Squirtle, let's go! Yes! Oh my god! Let's go, baby! It's been a long day, boys. I decided to name it Roshi, and now with that all out of the way, we do some sightseeing, stop some flamey boys. Ah, look who it is! Mr. Bad Hairdo. I guess I'm getting there as well, aren't I? Okay, I got the Team Flare Hairdo. Now let's see. Oh! We're twins! We're twins! Now we have two options here. Go hunt for another shiny, or head to gym two. What will RJ do? The fuck will RJ do? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Wait, he actually went and shiny hunted? Okay, fair enough. Wow, I was not expecting that. You know, this guy can be a bit of an idiot. Whoa, wait, what? Oh my god! <laughs> my headphones just disconnected, and I was wondering what the hell happened? Why did it disconnect? And then I look back, and there's a freaking shiny Lucha. Let's go! Hell yeah! Okay! Alright, I'm in for it! 
So on this route, there was actually a total of three different purple shinies, but we ended up with Horlucha. Super happy with it, and I name him Broly because, I mean, like, you see the green hair. If, if you know the theme, you get it. Also, I forgot to mention it, Squirtle evolved into a little purple boy. We love him, but it is gym time, so let's get into it. Now, what the heck is the deal with this carabine around this guy's neck? That shit ain't gonna help you. If you clip that onto something and fall, you're just gonna be sitting there, huh? And that's what you do every time you browse the internet without using a VPN. Every time you use the internet, you run the risk of those pesky little hackers stealing your data to do who knows what with. Well, maybe I know. So do the smart thing. Get the best VPN on the market at the best price. NordVPN. Plus, it's risk-free as they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. The link is in the description. And guys, if you want to support what I do and love my content, I would really appreciate you check them out. I use Nord myself and I couldn't recommend it anymore. So Gun here is a rock specialist. Fortunately, I have a water type and also now a fighting type on the team. But our fighting type has no fighting moves. So I guess we'll see how this goes. First turn, I set up as fire spin and we get paralyzed. Great. But, after a few turns, we gradually lower it to red health, but it is healed back up to full. We do burn it on the following turn, which is great as we get it to red again. I swap to Horlucha now, as we are also in the red, and we take some entrance damage. But, I do roost up back to full health, and the next turn, the stupid Dino tries to paralyze Horlucha, but my boy has the Limber ability, preventing it. Falling to its burn the next turn, in comes Tyron. Now we stall the fight out using Strength and Roost to heal up as soon as we get low. And without even using Roshi, we claim our second badge. Let's go, raising our level cap to 32. We head through this mirror cave and arrive in Mega City. We have to fight Serena here again in order to gain the right to get our Mega Bracelet. Okay, well, we beat her, but apparently that is not enough. And we also have to beat this rollerblading girl. She also happens to be the next gym leader, so at least we can tick that off our list at the same time. Now, she is a fighting specialist, and I don't know if I mentioned it, but Horlucha is a freaking goaded. One shot's Mianfu, one shot's Machoke, and well, would you look at that? One shot the boring, not shiny Horlucha as well. It's the bro fist badge. Maha, maha, bro fist, maha. And give me my bracelet as well. What do you mean? Bruh. Are you serious? We're gonna fight you again? Ah, uh, okay, fine. We claim our bracelet and our level cap is raised to only 34. So we can only fight things that we are forced to fight here. Otherwise, we run the risk of overleveling a Pokemon and then not being able to use it in the next gym. And luckily for me, I know a way to skip a couple of trainers here by hopping on this little boy and riding him to the final patch of the grass, where I'll actually be hunting my next shiny. Ideally, I want to find a Marip here, but there are two other purple shinies we can find here as well. Oh, shiny pincer! Yo! Yo! Oh my god! Oh my god! Thank the lord, man. I'm so tired. I'm like over this. Just like our last Pokemon X run, we have another shiny pincer. Nothing wrong with that, though. I name it Piccolo and we take the train up to the gym. But before we can enter, Serena wants to battle again! Jeez, needy much! We literally just fought! Anyway, Sergio Ramos over here has some scissors that are way too big. Like, what the heck are you even gonna be doing with that? Dude, didn't your mom ever tell you not to throw scissors? Or at least a teacher or something? Dude's old, he's probably forgotten, he's got bad memory. He's a grass specialist and just like the previous leader, he is rolled by Horlucha. Goaded. Literally. Go goaded. <laughs> Heading down south from here, we arrive in a desert environment. Now there are three Pokemon that spawn here and only one of those is a purple shiny. But it is a Pokemon that I need on my team. And thankfully, we got it. I almost clicked run. Holy shit. Oh my god, I almost clicked run. <laughs> Let's go! Shiny fucking gibble, baby. Okay, now I know looking at him, he's blue and yellow, but trust me, Garchomp is purple enough. This shiny literally took me a couple of weeks to find, probably because I went on holiday as well, but that's besides the point. I named this future Beast Vegeta and go stop a terror attack. Classic stuff. But before we can challenge the next gym, both Vegeta and Laquia evolve into both Gabite and Delphox respectively. 
Wow, this purple team is really coming together. But you know what I think we should do is all come together as a community today and smash like on the video and subscribe if you made it this far. It really does help me out a lot. So this electric specialist is a bit scarier, but with the help of our newly evolved Delphox, we take down the Emolga and Magneton before switching into Gabbard to take out the Heliolisk. Man, I miss my shiny Heliolisk from the last run. That red boy was so cute. Ah well, moving on. We have to go and meet the Professor now, who wants us to chat with Lysander. If you were somebody who was surprised by the reveal that Lysander was bad, like, I don't know what to say to you. So, as you guys know, I like to use Mega Pokemon in the games where Mega Pokemon is actually available. So, a fun and interesting little factoid about this version of Pokemon X that I have is it actually has some of the Mega Stones available a little bit earlier on than in the normal game. So, if you head over this way through Vert Plaza and into Avernal Avenue, you can come across the Stone Emporium. And inside the Stone Emporium, this guy right here sells a couple of stones, or ites. For me, he sells Mawalite. Interesting. I don't know why we need that. Pincerite. What are the chances? And Garchompite. All of the purple ites that we could possibly need. If for some reason we need to go and catch them while well, well, I guess I can do that. Ghost house. Oh no, not go- I- I ain't feeling the ghost vibes today, boy. Let's not go inside. Oh man, I hate ghosts. I hate the spookies. Get me out of here and into this nice dollhouse. Okay, this is kind of creepy as well when you think about it, but at least we're dealing with fairy Pokemon here and not spooky ghosts. That fry did inspire Roshi to evolve into his final form Blastoise though, and we're going to take full advantage of that in this next gym fight. First up is Mawile, who Delphox knocks out with a mystical fire. Sylveonna next is a bit more of a stall battle as we gradually lower each other's health. Barely surviving on red, it's healed up to full health, so I take the opportunity to swap to Roshi and Mega Evolve him. Oh yeah! Oh, Mega Blastoise, let's see it. Oh! <laughs> we love that. That is dope. Yes, it is past me, and after a couple of surfs, we take it down. The giant wall that is Blastoise literally takes no damage as we finish off Mr. Mime. Hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah, bro. Let's get it. Badge number six is now acquired, and we unlock Dazzling Gleam as a TM. Hell yeah, bro. From here, we fulfill the obligatory Evil Team shenanigans section of the game by battling some admins here. Who commands who in this thing? Is it the goggles in command or is the was the suit lady in command? I never understood this because this is an admin, but then the other ones have names. But are they underlings of the admins? Who? What? what what's the order here? Some someone in the comments, let me know, please, because I have no idea. We then save Mosshead and head towards Gym 7. But for like the sixth time already, we're going into a battle with our rival here. Like, stupid Serena. Like, you're not going to beat me. This gym leader is a psychic specialist that can float. Wait, did I read that right? A psychic specialist that can float. They're, wait, they're more than just those creepy kids in, in Hoenn that can, that can fly? O okay, okay, I guess this is a common thing in the Pokemon world. Alright, well, uh, anyway, those psychic Pokemon... Ah, uh, they're all scared of bugs, and fortunately for me, I have one of those on my team. Her first Pokemon though does have a small advantage against our bugs, so we take it out with Blastoise first. Piccolo, it's your time to shine. Mega Revolve! Okay... Ooh, Damn! That's kinda scary as fuck, I do not like that. That is scary as shit. Well, to be fair, if I had this thing coming at me, I'd be pretty scared too. Sloking stands no chance to the power of x and the same goes for this stupid cat thingy. We literally just took one of these out versus Serena, and now we're killing him again. I'm, I'm a cat murderer here, what the heck's going on? But that is badge 7 acquired, raising our level cap to 59, and we're going to be staying at that level cap for a little while. Fuck, what does this dude want? Fuck my trainers, come to you by Holocaster to make an important announcement. I am going to literally blow up the planet. Alrighty, well, 
Okay, I guess we can go and stop that from happening. So in the cafe where we met Lysander before, apparently there's this massive underground secret like sex dungeon and the villain himself is just hanging out down there. It's time to battle. Now this battle can be quite scary if you're not prepared for it, but luckily I've played this game a couple of times and so I think I know what I'm doing. Leading with Mianfu, I lead with Holucha, which I take out with a fly. Murkrow in next, we also take out with a fly, but not before it lowers our health to half, leaving just two Pokemon, but these two are quite scary. Okay, now we got that Garadusi in. So I swap into Pinsa, who can take a couple of hits, but can't do much in return. But it does get caught in an outrage, making it a little safer for me to swap into Delphox. This allows me to go for a couple of Psy Shocks, and after landing a couple of those and it hitting itself in confusion, it goes down. Pyro is this final mon which I save Blastoise for, who comes in and is knocked out by a Surf. This does lead Gabite to evolve into the final evolution of the run. I hope at least. But even with Lysander down, we have a lot of work to do, as we go around beating all of the grunts and making our way down to the basement. In said basement, there is a man locked up against his will. Okay, Lysander's a little freak in the sheets, I guess. They ramble on about their love life or something, I wasn't listening, and we stop the ultimate weapon that he was planning to destroy the earth with, but this sack of pudding activates it anyway. Dog act, Mountain of Fudge. Dog act. So when we would have been done with this plot point and been able to go and beat the last gym and head up to the Elite Four, instead, now we're forced to go battle Lysander again. This time, we do have Garchomp on side, so it's a little less stressful, but after learning what he does to people he beats, aka locking up in this little dungeon, I really can't afford to lose this battle. Luckily, we come out on top and he starts crying. And so do I, except mine are tears of joy, as I escape that fate. So, in a last-ditch effort to stop this madman, we battle through a whole stack of goons and steal his legendary Pokemon. But ultimately, it kinda screws me over, as now I'm forced to lead with this non-shiny and non-purple Pokemon, but our battle with Lissandra begins now anyway. So first up, he sends out Mian Chao, and the first thing I have to do is swap off Xerneas. I decide to swap to Holucha and take minimal damage before taking it out. Honchkrow scares me a lot more now, as it's not a Murkrow anymore, so I swap to Garchomp. Let's go! Now that is a purple boy! We like that! Yes, we do! Okay, spin off the one shot. Oh, rough. Now we've taken down the bird, in comes Pyro, which we take out with a dig, but we do get lowered to red ourselves. Yo, I love Mega Garchomp's, like, chin. They give everything that's a Mega a chin. They give Mega Charizard Y a chin, they give Garchomp a, uh, Mega Garchomp a chin, and they give uh, Mega Blastoise a chin as well. I like it. The Chad chin. Give the Megas Chad chins! Now, with Gyarados in, I predict the Outrage and I swap to Delphox to go for a Psychic. But Outrage does way more damage than I was hoping for. So, I make a second swap to Blastoise, who also drops below half health. Hmm, my final hope here is Pinsa. With everything so weak and Xerneas screwing me over, I'm forced to rely on Pinsa to take it out. But since it's now Dark type, it is weak to Pinsa's Storm Throw. It drops it below half, and now our only chance to not lose Pinsa was to pray it hits itself in confusion. Hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself, hit yourself. We had no other option there. We actually had no other option. Everything else died. That, that was it. Oh my god. We've done it again. Save the world. Pretty exciting stuff, but definitely not as exciting as getting the next shiny Pokemon, which is just around the corner. But to get there, we have to cross this bridge. Now, you may be wondering, what's so special about a bridge? Well, nothing really, except that we are forced into a couple of back-to-back -back battles where we are unable to heal. These other children get almost my whole squad into red and we only barely survive, as Shauna's Gudra manages to deal a lot of damage to Garchomp, as well as a couple of others. As she brings in Chestnut though, we do manage to take it out with Delphox, but the second battle starts straight away. And that results in both Blastoise and Pinsir's health being dropped to red, but we do scrape through. Thankfully, we are healed before the next fight, and honestly, we needed it, allowing us to make it over this bridge without losing anyone. But man, that was close. Alrighty, now we've made it. In this grass, we have a 60% chance that the shiny we find will be purple. 
and there is three purple Pokemon in total. What? Shiny Ditto. <laughs> we can't use that. Oh, bro, we can't use it though. I'll still catch it. It's still definitely worth catching. It's gone straight in the Pokey home. Sadly, this ain't a blue run, so we've got to keep on hunting. <coughs> Look at this dude. Wait till you see the. Johnny's. Johnny's. Let's go. Now, I was really tossing up on what to name this thing. I had two really good options in mind, but I just couldn't pick. So I asked my Discord, who responded so quickly, and we ended up making a poll which led to Trunks being the name of the Zorok. This is my favorite purple shiny Pokemon, and one of my favorite Pokemon in general. So dope. But also, if you want to chat to me, join the Discord. I'm always in there, and, uh, and the link to join that is in the description. And with that, I sent a Super Saiyan 4 by putting on all this new drip. I don't know, how How do you think I did? This is kind of Super Saiyan 4 vibes, right? And we head into the final gym. Wolfric is a nice specialist, and looking at my squad, what do you think happens? Yup, destruction, annihilation, and decimation of the entire enemy team. Every single one melted away by Delphlox. This indeed means we have yet again made it to Victory Road. Of course, we can't forget Serena always wants to fight us, and we take her to Pound Town. Okay, that sounds wrong. My bad. I take her down. And after a little bit more brute force, we make our way through Victory Road and to the Elite Four. And I think we have made it to the Pokemon League. Let's go. Oh. Oh my god, we, look at that background! It all sort of blends into the one background, you know? We've got the, we've got the space up there, we've got the space up there. It's all like space and stuff. Space is happening. We're in space. I'm in space. All we have to do now is be four pesky Elite Four members and then pound Diantha. Wait, 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 did he do it again? Okay, dude, okay, that was my bad. It won't happen again. That just slipped out. First up is Mistress Mummy Malva. Oh my god, he's, he, he can't help himself. Leading with Pyro, we lead with Mega Blastoise. Of course, we take it out with a Surf, and in comes Talonflame. You guessed it though, it's swept away. Ah, a fellow turtle, but you ain't purple. Destroyed. Her only troublesome Pokemon here was Chandelure, but we eventually take it out with a Night Daze from this beautiful Zorok. Wickedy Wickedy Wickstrom is next, and it ends up being a full team fight. Leading with Klefki, we lead with Delphox, who manages to knock it out with a Flamethrower, which lands a lucky burn. Probopass obviously is problematic, so I swapped to Garchomp to take it out. Aegislash in next manages to get Garchomp to low enough health where I need to swap him out. I swapped to Zorak who wasn't able to finish the job, so now with a lot of my team weak, I swapped to Blastoise who does manage to take it out with a final surf. Then his final Mon Sizzle is taken out by Flamethrower. Now up is Drizzy Drazna, and honestly Drizzy could not better describe Drazna as uh, this fight is so easy with Mega Garchomp. See, what did I tell you? Finally, Cybolt is probably the scariest of the Elite Four members, so I've got my work cut out for me here. Oh, you see this thing? You fucking run, boy. That thing is the, 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 the... That is nightmare fuel right there. I ain't seen anything scary in my life. And that's how you take down a crayfish. Sadly now though, Pinsir is weak, so we have to swap to Garchomp to take out the Barbarical. But it does manage to do some chip damage and also gets its defense lowered before we manage to take it out. Gyarados in next, I swap to Blastoise trying to dodge that Ice Fang. And the Gyarados starts raising its attack stat as I start raising my defense. I prepare another Skull Bash, but out of nowhere, Gyarados lands a freaking critical E-Quake. What the heck? I'm gonna... Yeah, one more Skull Bash. Just wow. A quick bout of depression later, I send in Zoroark, who comes in disguised as Holucha, and returns a crit to the stupid Gyarados. That's what you get, boy. That's what you get. How could you take Blastoise from me? I'm um, just thinking about it. Roshi's kind of old. He was. He probably wasn't long for this world. All right. All he has left now is Starmie, and you can see how this goes. 
Who <laughs> thinks I'm a fucking fighting type idiot, Starby, bro? What do you got? Two IQ in there or something? What are you, like a starfish or something? Bro. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually quite salty about the uh, about the Blastoise. Well, there goes another flawless run. Maybe one day I'll be able to do X and Y flawless, but I guess this just isn't that run. But we have made it to the champion again, which is good, but only with five Pokemon. Will I be able to beat it? Let's find out. Leading with Horlucha, I leave with my much cooler green-haired Horlucha, who we one-shot with Fly. Aurorus. Rookie error. Mm -mm -mm, no, no, no. Now I'll tell you why. Because we got the fly press, baby. Oh, oh it lives? Shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I thought the quad effectiveness of a flying press would knock out Aurorus. Am I wrong to think that? I'm sending Garchomp now to take revenge for Halucha. Goodbye, Aurorus. Our final time seeing Giga Chat Garchomp. Come on, Vegeta, let's see. Ultra Ego Vegeta! Let's go! So long, Giga Bowser! Gudra in next was a rookie error, as nothing can beat Ultra Ego Giga Chin Vegeta. Am I right? I am right, because in comes Tyrantrum, destroyed. Gore guys, bitten or crunched. Oh, and what's happened? We've rolled through half of our team with just Vegeta, the Garchomp. Well, if you guys know X and Y, you know what's about to come in next. So, I don't know if it's going to make it through, but let's see what happens. Right, we dodge its first attack. It's probably Moonblast. Yeah. We'll do whatever chip damage we do. Yo, guys! We speed tied! We speed tied! We speed tied! That means we dodged it twice with the same dig. Okay, now crunch, be full resource, that's fine. Crunch just needs to do a tiny bit of damage. Then we dig, and we win. Yo, wait, crunch knocks it next turn. Unless it low rolls. I think dig's safe. Fuck it. Oh, it outspeeds this turn! Live Garchomp, live Garchomp! Special attack fell, that's fine. Get in the ground! You can't see me! You can't see me! Yeah! Let's go with Garchomp, my boy! Ego! Ultra Ego Vegeta does it! Let's go! And that's how we do a Pokemon X! Shiny only! purple only run of this game oh my god hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what your favorite purple shiny is in the comments below what your favorite part of this run was let me know and if you have any ideas of what i should do next also let me know that in the comments i'm, I'm always open to suggestions and if you guys enjoyed it slap like hit subscribe and i'll see you guys later peace